Hello again, everyone. And as always, it's a blessing to be here with you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans, the 13th chapter. And we're going to be looking at the eighth verse, or beginning at the eighth verse. And it reads, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there's any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chamberlain and wantonness, nor in strife and envying. It says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, it is such a blessing to be able to break bread with your people. I ask in the name of Jesus that you would enlighten the eyes of our understanding that you would allow the life of this word to live, that it would go forth and accomplish what you send it to do. And it is in Jesus' name that we thank you. Amen. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Saying in loving or showing love to another is fulfilling the law. Let's look at that law. Turn to Leviticus, the 19th chapter and the 18th verse. And it reads, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Now listen to this. Thou shalt not avenge, retaliate for any hurt, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. And we all can say just hearing this, Lord, forgive us. Amen. <laughs> you see, to love is a powerful thing, yet it is very hard. It's a very hard thing to do. And many of us have or are even now suffering from something that someone has done or even said to us. But we are not to, according to the word, we're not to avenge uh, or retaliate for or uh, bear any grudge because of these things. And I know many, if not most, have done just the opposite. Amen. And this, I believe, comes from not knowing or really um, understanding that it is only by allowing God to work in us. His good pleasure It's only by allowing the Holy Ghost to do what only he can do through us. And that is to help us change our nature, change the way we think and do things and to help us um, use the pain, betrayal, disappointment, and hurt as stepping stones. And this was interesting to me, and I thought about this story. Y'all know I like to tell these stories, <laughs> uh, share these stories. But um, I heard a story about a goat. And it says um, the goat had got uh, trapped in, uh, in, a, in a, a whale. And so what happened was, because the people could not get him out of the whale, they decided, you know what, we're just going to bury him alive. And so what they began to do was just throw dirt into the well. So they began to shovel the dirt and just throw the dirt into the well. And what was happening was but as they kept putting the dirt into the well, the goat began to pack the dirt up under his feet. And the more dirt they threw in, the more he packed up under his feet. As the higher he got, he was able to lift himself up and get free. And when you think about that, it's how we should be. Even though the bad things come, the rough things come, the hard things come, we should allow, as I said before, the pain and the betrayal and the disappointment and the hurt to help us to grow. You see, our suffering should help us grow. But a lot of times people take it to heart. They, they're overcome by it. They're oppressed by it. And so it takes a, a totally different uh, turn. And what happens is the things that hold us back hinder us from allowing the Holy Ghost to reveal Christ in us. And when his love is real in our hearts, 
verse 9 shows up. And so when verse 9 shows up, there's no reason to commit adultery. Why? Because they only have eyes for you. There's no need to kill, steal, bear false witness, or covet um, to desire what someone else has. When you make the time to know who you are, whose you are, and all that it is that you have in him, talking about Jesus, you will begin to truly love yourself, and then you'll be able to love what? Your neighbor. Verse 10 says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Galatians 13 says, we have been called unto liberty to be free. Only use not or don't use the freedom to satisfy the flesh, but love. But by love, serve one another. Now, let me say that again. We have been called unto liberty. Only don't use this freedom to satisfy the flesh, but by love, serve one another. And when you think about this, it's, it's an interesting thing because according to what the word is telling us, Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world, past, present, and future. So someone would look at that and say, well, you know what? I can do what I want to do. I can live how I want to live. Why? Because I know I'm forgiven. So it's okay for me to curse you out today and ask God to forgive me. It's all right for me to fornicate and ask God to forgive me. It's all right for me to steal something and ask God to forgive me. But what people have to understand is that we have choices and we can make decisions, but there are consequences to these choices and to these decisions. So whether you're doing something good, you have the consequences of that. But whether you're doing something bad, you have the consequences of that also. And so in looking at that, because so many of us uh, have or are serving the flesh, it's taken a little bit longer for many of us to grow up and mature in the things of God. And you can reference that in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, in that 12th through the 13th verse. Children of God, look around. According to this word, it is high time, that's what the scripture says, to awake out of sleep. It says salvation is nearer than when we first believed. We have to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Listen. Your dad, mom, sister, brother, lover, husband, wife, bishop, pastor, teacher, neighbor, friend, or even your children all have caused pain, disappointment, hurt, or betrayal. And even if it has been years on their part because of the guilt, the shame, or maybe they just don't even care, we, as children of God, have to allow him through the power of the Holy Ghost to help us let it all go. We have to just cast all of our cares upon him. So what am I saying? It's time to stop the excessive drinking. It's time to stop doing the drugs. It's time to stop sleeping around, using these things as excuses to uh, escape the reality of what's going on with you in your life because you, want, you don't want to deal with the reality of what's going on. We have to stop um, holding grudges, being angry, resentful, and unforgiving because these things is what's holding us down. The scripture says to owe no man anything, to owe no man anything but to love him. So when you think about this, I know that you'll be around people sometimes who feel like they're entitled. Uh, they might feel like they're privileged. Um, and they want you to always remember what it is that they've done for you. They don't ever want you to forget if they do give you a dime. <laughs> they want you to remember that they gave you that dime. But our loyalty, our loyalty and our faith and our dependency should be on Christ Jesus. Amen. So don't continue to allow yourself to be indebted or feel obligated to any man because we owe our lives to Jesus Christ and all we owe to man is love. Amen. Let me say that again. We owe our lives to Jesus Christ. All we owe to man is to love him. In other words, just what's right by them. Amen. 
So Romans, the 12th chapter in the 19th verse says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. It says, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And some people, I guess they think God is taking too long <laughs> or he, he doesn't do it the way they would do it. And sometimes you just got to thank God for who he is because some of us would be, oh my God, <laughs> you would have been gone a long time ago if it was in the hands of people to deal with you according to your sins. But because of his grace and his mercy, we're not dealt with according to our sins. So the scripture says, let us walk honestly as in the day and put on um, the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it's telling us to think like he thinks, to behave as he would behave and to um, live as he would live, making no provisions or plans for the flesh um, to fulfill the lusts and the desires thereof. The word says also in 1 Timothy, the first chapter in that fifth verse, it says the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Amen. It's saying here that the end of the commandment or the goal is charity, love out of a pure or clean heart or mind and of a good conscience and of a faith unfeigned. And that is having a genuine and a sincere faith in God. Amen. So to grow in grace to the point of being able to owe no man anything but love is a joy and a peace given only by God. When we seek him, when we seek it, when we're willing to cast all our cares upon him, when we're willing to acknowledge that we need him to help us. So the scripture says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, his truth, his word that became flesh saying that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the dead is saying that you shall be saved. It's simple. Salvation is so simple. His love is in us. And we have the ability to love. Why? Because God loves us so deeply. Amen. Thank you, God. He loves us so deeply that that love is actually in us. And so... We have to realize that um, when we have someone who's, who we love or who we feel is special to us, realizing what we have. You know, I, I think about the times now the coronavirus is going on and people are home, you know, and have a lot of time. Things are kind of slow down everywhere. It's like it's an opportunity to take inventory. In other words, it's an opportunity to see uh, or to really look at what you have all that you have, um, who, who you have, you know, in your life. If you have a good man or a good woman, learn to love again. If you have a husband or a good, a good husband or a good wife, learn to love again. If you have a family, your children, learn to love again. And these are things that's important because of the fact that we have to um, really consider that God is allowing everything to happen the way that it is happening because he wants us to be able to have time to think, to contemplate, to realize what's going on in our lives. And sometimes, believe it or not, that can't happen unless you get still, <laughs> when you're getting still somewhere. So I think about if you do have someone who has caused you pain, betrayed you, disappointed you, or hurt you, forgive them and learn to love again. It's in you, I'm telling you. This ability is in us. And as I said before, God loves us so deeply. That love is shed abroad in our hearts by his Holy Spirit. And God will always keep his promise to us. You can take that to the bank, amen? Because he loves us. Owe no man anything but to love him. And that, that's just, as I said earlier, just doing what is right towards them. If he's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. If he needs a ride and you can do it, give him a ride. Amen. So in just going over what we just kind of talked about, it's really a, a simple thing. But to know and understand that God is in control, that he loves us and his love. I'm telling you, you have the ability. Some people, they're so caught up in all kinds of things thinking that, you know, they messed up so badly but you haven't. 
Because every day that you wake up, every morning that you wake up, is an opportunity to give God the praise, to give God the glory, to know that I can acknowledge that I've sinned and confess my sins and he's faithful and just to forgive me. And that's his word. And so, owe no man anything but to love. Owe no man anything but to do what is right by him. And in doing that, you give glory and honor to God. Amen? Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for the simplicity of your word. We thank you, oh God, that we can just speak your word to the hearts and minds of your people to truly understand it. There's so much going on, oh God, and we of ourselves, we know that we need you. We don't look like what we've been through, as I said earlier. And we know, oh God, that it is only by your grace and your mercy. We're asking in the name of Jesus that you will comfort those that are bereaved, that you will strengthen those that are weak, that you will encourage those that are discouraged. And stir up within us, O oh God, that love that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit and help us to love again. Help us to lay aside every sin and the weights that do so easily beset us, O oh God, that we may begin to press forward. You're coming back for your church, O oh God. You're coming back for us whether we're ready or not. It's like the five versions, O oh God. Five were foolish and five were wise. We want to be ready. We want to be like the wise. We ask in the name of Jesus that you continue supplying everything that we need. Not that we're so dependent on the government, oh God, but let us know that we can depend on each other. For you said in your word, a new commandment I give you, that you would love one another. Help us, oh God, to love one another, to forgive one another, to help one another, to strengthen one another. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray this. Amen. Again, I want to thank everyone for listening. I love you all. Please continue to watch, share, and subscribe. Be sure to visit our website and listen to the many other teachings that we have until the word begins to come alive in you or you begin to understand it even the more. Until we meet again, keep the faith.